President Trump hung a portrait of Andrew Jackson in the Oval Office shortly after moving into the White House and embraced comparisons to the seventh president of the United States of a modern day old hickory, a man representing an angry people fed up with Washington elites. Critics say they aren't alike at all, but who better to separate fact from fiction than Brian Kilmeade, co-host of Fox & Friends, also a best-selling author, and he's got a brand new book, Andrew Jackson and the Miracle of New Orleans, The Battle That Shaped America's Destiny. Brian, I know that you said you just left the clubs for us, so yes. you, we're seeing you without a tie. This is relaxed, Brian. Um, we're glad to have you. Thanks for joining us. You know, I, uh, Shannon, you don't even know, when I interview you on radio, you don't even know what I'm wearing. So I'm really right. just struck by the fact that you're commenting on my lack of tie. Well, you could be like in Santa Fiti pajamas at that point. <laughs> right. I don't know. Uh, right. But, you know, that's where you let your hair down is on the radio. Yeah, and true. apparently your neckline also. Um, but, Absolutely. Okay, so let me ask you about this because um, there was a writer in Politico did this piece, H.W. Uh, Brands. He said this, as a historian who has studied Jackson at length, talking about the president and Andrew Jackson being alike, he says, I say fat chance. In truth, the two have little in common besides the distrust they have inspired in certain elements of the political elites of their day. Now, you've written a book on Andrew Jackson. You happen to know the current president very well. What say you? Well, this is going to be a part of a special that airs at 8 o'clock on Sunday on our very channel, and this is it. I'm sure Mr. Brands has studied Jackson. And one thing that does come clear from the article, it's full of facts, but it also is full of hatred for President Trump. Let me tell you and let the audience at home decide, the Bream audience, which is enormous, decide if he's like... Donald, uh, Donald Trump and Jackson are like. Number one, it is absolutely 100% true that they're both obsessed with the media. As you'll see in the special, there are binders four feet high. Jackson used to keep newspaper columns that he thought were inaccurate, news reports that he thought weren't right, and write comments on them. Not true. Find him. Track him down. Wow. He used to have his own news service. Number two, of course, they were outsider candidates who used the power of the people to put him into office, despised by Washington. Then it was Virginia, Philadelphia, and New York, but now it's Washington. Is that true? A hundred percent. Both were very wealthy. That's 100% true. Both sacrificed tremendously financially in order to become president. That is 100% true. Number two, number five, actually, they both were I've very critical count. of their predecessors. One, Barack Obama. The other one was John Quincy Adams, John Adams, George Washington, and Jefferson. So Jackson actually criticized the founding fathers for losing touch with the people. Donald Trump was vilified Republicans and Democrats prior to him for losing touch with the people. There are a lot of similarities. There's no doubt about it. And by the way, Trump was right. There might not have been a civil war if Andrew Jackson was president because his focus was always union first. And he was quoted everywhere mm -hmm. saying that. So again, Trump did the studying. There are some differences. Obviously, one was born into wealth. One was in abject poverty. I get that. But as they moved up in life, very similar. They say that Jackson was a, that Trump is crude. Jackson treated women uh, differently. Well, that's fine. But when it came to life, uh, Donald Trump didn't shoot anybody. Uh, Andrew Jackson did, and he got shot back at. So there's a little bit of difference because there's 200 years between them. They also, mostly and foremostly, uh, they both had very interesting hair. Well, as do you. Now, I want to take this little pause here to play a little bit of your special to give people a sneak preview of uh, what they're going to see on Sunday night, 8 o'clock, right here on Fox News. There it is. Right now. This is it. Watch. Listen. The historic French Quarter. Charters in St. Louis. Why would I bring you to this intersection? Because it was right here in this building, 200 plus years ago, where Andrew Jackson met with his generals, and they sketched out a battle plan to take on the British. It was nothing short of brilliant and yielded unparalleled success. Now, not only are you skipping the tie again there, but I'm, I'm sure there are more important things we need to know about this special and what we're going to learn on Sunday night. Yeah, there's a big debate on the statue. Even though Jackson saved New Orleans and pulled off one of the greatest military feats in modern military history, if you'd call 200 years modern, they still study in war colleges today. But as you look back at, at the battlefield, we'll tell you exactly what was at stake leading up to that. We'll tell you how he did it and also why today, the mayor today and others want to take his statue down. Mm. And we do get into the statue debate right in Jackson Square in New Orleans. Mm. It's unthinkable, but there's actually a push to push Jackson off his pedestal in New Orleans, the city he saved and the country he preserved. I'm outraged, but I do the debate right in front of the statue. Almost something that Shannon Bream would do in her heyday. I would, but I would be wearing a tie, unlike you. You, uh, you would not wear a tie. <laughs> I might. You don't know. Listen, yeah. Sunday night we will watch right here on Fox. It looks fascinating, and congrats on the success of the book as well. Now back to the clubs for you. I can go now? 
Yeah. Thanks, Brian. All right. Great. Excellent. <laughs>